Lord, and he's been good to you. Say amen again. This is the day that the Lord has made. And every time we have an opportunity, we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in God's house once again? Has the Lord been kind and gracious and generous to you? Is he worthy to be praised, church? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy to be praised. David said it like this, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, my innermost being, make, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Amen. Stand on your feet on today and give God the best praise. Amen. The best sign of worship that you can give him. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Let us magnify him on today. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are so thankful to have all our visitors and guests who may be worshiping with us for the first or second time here at SNBC. We welcome you. We're grateful that you have decided to make Second Missionary Baptist Church your place of worship on today. If you are worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for you. If you don't mind, share with us your name and the location where you're worshiping from so we can make a more intimate connection with you as our worship service continues here at Second Missionary Baptist Church. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Barlow, and the entire SNBC family, we welcome you and we thank God for your welcome to the, to the sanctuary of praise. You're welcome. To the sanctuary of praise, anytime our doors are open, you're welcome. To the sanctuary of praise. Put those hands together for our visitors and our guests on today. Amen. Amen. I am blessed, and I know that I'm blessed. It's not an arrogant statement to say that you're blessed. Because you're blessed by not what you have, you're blessed by who you know. And we don't, bless, we don't give to be blessed, we give because we are blessed. The Bible encourages us to be cheerful givers, to give out of the cheerfulness of our hearts. It also encourages us that when we give, God gives back to us. Press down, shaking together and running over. And how many of you know that the Lord is a provider? How many know that the Lord is faithful? How many know every time that you need something, God always comes through? It may not be when you want it, but he's always on time. And we're thankful that God is a provider, that God is a restorer, that God is a blesser. Listen, we want to encourage each of you to continue to give out of the generosity of your heart. Thank you so much for your sacrificial giving and your obedience to giving. It's because of your giving, we're able to do ministry here at Second Baptist. You can give several ways here at SNBC. You can give through PayPal, Givelify, Cash App, or you can mail your tithing offering to the church. However you choose to give, we just want to make sure that you take advantage of these platforms. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed. Come on, let me hear you, y'all. You're blessed. We're blessed. Man, how many you know late in the midnight hour, when you're sleeping, God is working things out for your good? That's the divine assurance that we have on today because we're blessed. Amen. Put your hands together for our tithing offering as they come into this sanctuary on today. Amen. If you don't mind, stand all over this place as we prepare to recite our vision statement together with clarity and with conviction. We want to recite this vision statement every Sunday with clarity and with conviction, because our vision statement reminds us of who we are 
as a local church. Amen? Amen. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassionate work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we see transformation and let it start with me. Put those hands together. Come on, y'all. Let me hear those blessed hands. Amen. Amen. Our scripture will be coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 4 through 10, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. He writes, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy, because his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus for by grace have you been saved through faith not that you're not of yourselves, that is a gift of God, not of the works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. The word of God for the people of God, and God's people said together, thanks be unto God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name above all the earth. God, we have assembled ourselves together in this place at this very time to worship you in spirit and in truth. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place on today. Breathe new life into us. Break up the fallow ground that we may be worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Every sick member, every shut-in member among us, who needs to be touched by your divine healing on today. God, we pray that you would touch their bodies and their minds. Remind them that you are still Jehovah Rapha, that you still can heal. God, those who are needing provisions on today, remind your people that you're still Jehovah Jireh, that you're still the great provider. God, as we worship you on today, God, we pray that you would saturate our hearts and minds to be concentrated on you. God, we lay every burden, every care, every concern at your feet on today, understanding that you are still the God who still hears and answers prayer, that you are still the God who can do and perform the impossible. So God, breathe on us on today. Have your way in this place. Fall fresh in this place, oh God. Touch this praise team on today, oh God. Anoint their voices afresh that they might sing for your glory that your people might be edified. Bless the hands of the musicians on today, that they might play to your glory. And, oh, God, as we prepare to hear a rhema word from you on today, touch the mind and the heart of this pastor preacher that you have given to us on today, that he might teach and preach your word with clarity and with conviction. Take him down to the deep treasures of your word, oh, God, that he might give us a revelant word that might give us a closer walk with you. We thank you on today, God. We thank you on today, God. We are blessed because we are your children. God, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. God, forgive us for our sins of omission as well as commission. God, help us to be found faithful in doing what you've asked us to do. God, we close this prayer and we repeat the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Put those hands together for our praise team. Amen. You may be seated. Amen.
us. God blocked it. Hallelujah. We're here today because God is faithful. He will do what he promised that he would do.
If the Lord's been faithful to you, say amen. How many you know that our God is faithful? Whatever he promises, he'll always bring it to pass. I'm so grateful for the goodness and mercy of God and how he continues to look past our faults and see us at our point of our need. He's worthy to be praised, church. He's worthy to be praised. So grateful to have with us uh, Pastor's son, Mr. Calvin Barlow and his family with us all the way from Alabama. Amen. Good to see you, brother. You and your beautiful family with us, worshiping with us on today. We're so grateful for him and his family. Amen. Are you having a good time? Amen, 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 amen. I tell you, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Don't leave this place with the same burden that you walked in here with. You got an opportunity to leave it here, amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to hear a word from the Lord on today. Amen. 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 The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is what we come for, to hear a word from the Lord. I want you to pray with him and for him that God will use Pastor Barlow in a very special way this morning to speak a revelant word to our lives. Amen. We want to prepare our hearts and minds with our song of sermon preparation. Yes to your will, yes to your way. Whatever you decide to do in this house today, Lord, just have your way. How many of you want God to have his way on this place today? Not your way, but let God have his way. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll obey. So whatever you decide to do in this house today, Lord, have your way. Put your hands together for our shepherd on today. Amen. Opportunity. Amen. Good to see all of you, and especially, uh, amen, my uh, son, oldest son here, uh, and my uh, lovely daughter in law. Amen. Uh, I, I don't think y'all come to see me. Uh, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't get that right. You know, I, I get it happy sometimes. I think they show up to see me. They didn't, they didn't come to see me. Uh, Bass, uh, the, that Miller son showed up out of nowhere for, for the, my appreciation last year. I got happy. Until his mother said, no, he didn't come to see you. He came to go to the Titan game. <laughs> but anyway, good to see y'all. Even though y'all didn't show up to see me, amen. Amen. Uh, 
God is so awesome and God is so good. Amen. Awesome and he is good. Amen. I'm going to need you to pray with me and pray for me this morning. The Lord has put a, a message in my spirit that and that's not accustomed to the message he's given me in past time, but I think that it's a relevant message. And it's a message that I ask that you pray that the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. We're living in some unusual times. We'll witness some things that we thought we would not witness in our lifetime. And we see a reversal of many things that that we had thought was a glimpse of hope being attacked. And so in many instances, we see regression rather than progression. And so we need God to strengthen us in our faith. And I'm continuing to ask God to guide me and to keep me strong. The church is under attack, but believe it or not, as I said in the discovery hour this morning, the greatest threat to the local church is not the people on the outside, but the people on the inside. The people on the inside. You can be destroyed faster by those who hug and kiss on you. Faster than those you know to stay away from. And so the church is under a great attack. And I want to thank the choir, well not the choir, but the praise team for that selection, that we, there's some things we got to take back from the Satan. Amen. Amen. And there's some things we got to take back from Satan. And so I ask that you'll pray with me and pray for me. That God will use me to speak a, a word on his behalf. We thank God for our musician, Jermaine. Jermaine has to, he told me he had to leave immediately to do something. So we thank God for him, his presence. Let us pray. Father God, we come now in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. And Lord, we come saying thank you. Father God, I ask now that the Holy Spirit will make himself known unto every hearer. And if I should say something incorrectly, that the Holy Spirit will give understanding and correction. Help me, O oh Lord, to be faithful to you Help me, O oh Lord, to be bold and steadfast in you. I need you now. I need you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. There are two epistles that I want to share with you today for our uh, sermon and thought. I want us to 
notice the third chapter of Galatians, verse 27 and 28. And then 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter and verse 13. I've chosen the New King James Version for both reading. And they both are from the same author, not author, I should say writer, because the author is God or the Holy Spirit. But from the pensmanship of Paul. In that third chapter, Paul says in verse 27, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And verse 28, he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are one in Christ Jesus. Paul says to the church at Corinth, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. The Samaritan thought today is the body of Christ and the local church the body of Christ and the local church. In Paul's writing to the church at Galatians, he addressed them because of the fact that there is a internal strife. The internal strife has to do with the coming together of those persons who have been converted from Judaism to Christianity. And those persons coming from pagan religion. They now make up one local church. But there seemed to be some strife among them as how some are trying to find not only the makeup and structure of the church, but even to the point what constitute one being saved by grace. Paul, as he writes to the church at Corinth, that notable city, a wealthy city during the time of Paul, but a corrupt city. And in that city, Paul has to remind them that we are one because of the Holy Spirit baptism into one body. The purpose of today's message is to acknowledge division in Christianity. Let me say it again. The purpose of today's message is to acknowledge the division in Christianity. I want to throw away my training for a while. 
and not completely throw it away. But to say that I need to be real, that there is division in Christianity. I tell people I am a realist. You need to stop lying to yourself sometime. People see what's going on. And God cannot help us until we let him know we know what's going on and that we need some help. All right. All right. If there ever been a time that Christians needed help, it's right now. What Paul is dealing with in the first century church there in Galatia, we're dealing with it right now. And there are folks who try to define who are Christians and what you need to do in order to become a Christian. When I was a young student, I, I spent my time learning all of the different theological terms, their implication and their application. But I've come to, to know that it's not our doctrine that save us. Y'all better listen to me today. God has not given no one person the absolute doctrine to save nobody. If you and I are to be saved, it is because of the working of the Holy Spirit. Paul argues with them that there is no work that you can do to earn your justification in the presence of God. In other words, there's nothing that makes you right. There's nothing that you and I can do to make us right before God. We are counted right because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And there are folks now that have put up a lineage test who they deem to be Christian. And many of us have fallen into that trap by allowing other folks to tell us who are Christian and who are not a Christian. The Bible teaches me that man cannot add anything to the word of God that will merit me salvation. Listen to me. And so we live in a world today that you and I need to be honest with ourselves. There is division in Christianity. You see, this is where I differ with my theological training. Even though I want to say that, and let me say this before I move to my different, that even though there is division in Christianity, I need to say, on the other hand, that I need to assure you that your salvation is sure for those who are in the body of Christ. I need to say that again. Even though I see fighting among different denominations, even I see folks using Jesus' name and praying in Jesus' name 
in vain, spewing out hatred. I need to assure you on the other hand, that your salvation is sure as long as you and I are in the body of Christ. You see, Christianity, and this is where I differ with my, my theological form of training. As they try to teach me that Christianity was this living organism. But in actual Allerday Christianity is a system of religious belief focused on Jesus. And all of us who call on the name of Jesus don't have the same focus on Jesus. Oh, listen to me. Y'all about to listen to me. All of us who even read the same Holy Script do not come away with the same interpretation. And so, Michael, I disagree with my teachers who try to teach me that Christianity was a living organism. The read of what I, what I see with my eyes and what I have in spirit, that Christianity is a religious belief system that focuses on Jesus. But the fact is, all of us don't have the same focus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. All of us don't have the same focus. Within Christianity as a belief system, there are many heads and interpretation of the scripture. We got popes. They say one thing. We got chief apostles, and they say another thing. And even in recent days, a pastor of a Catholic church who was over the whole diocese made a decision that one person was not worthy of communion. In other words, there in the Christian Christianity, there are some folks that even set themselves on the same equalness as God himself. <laughs> Y'all better hear me today. Y'all better hear me today. If we're going to appeal to folks who are unsaved, if we're going to appeal to folks who are looking for a better way, we better help them understand that there is a difference between the body of Christ and the local congregation. Y'all better listen to me. Yeah, because if they think that the local congregation is all that it is, then they will be disturbed and turn around. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because I see too many people acting a, a dummy. Why would I want to be a part? of something that spewed hate like the world spewed hate. Why would I want to be a part of something that don't love the way they say the man they represent love? And if it ever been a time that we need to make a difference between the body of Christ and the local church is right now. When I see all the disturbing folks in the pulpit, spewing out hatred because the way folks look, trying to make themselves or herself God Almighty, trying to determine who's worthy and who's not worthy to sit at the feet of Jesus. It disturbs me, Michael. It disturbs me. And not only does it disturb me, but it makes me fear that those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior will lose their faith in Jesus. And so there is a difference between the body of Christ and the local church. In the local church, there are many heads. But in the body of Christ, 
There is only one head, and that is Jesus the Christ. Y'all about to hear me. Yeah, in the local church, there are many heads, but in the body of Christ, there is a one head, and that is Jesus Christ. As the Lord was leading me down this road, I began to wonder why the local church? Why the local church? My sister and my brother, the local church is God-appointed method of gathering together those who are in the body of Christ to carry out the mission of Christ. There's a purpose for the local church. The local church is that place, that institution, where all of those who are in the body of Christ come together to carry out the mission of Christ. But the sad news, according to the text, that everybody who gathered together in the local church is not a part of the body of Christ. Y'all about to hear me today. And that's why you and I can show up in on Sunday morning and folks sit on the pews and hear the word of God and leave the same way that they came in. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, this morning. Because in the local church, if you may allow me that, if both wheat and taff, and only the word of God can do the separation. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus said, let them grow. Let them grow together. And I do the separation. The local church is the only institution that has been commanded to grow God's spiritual kingdom on earth. When Jesus died, he didn't die for the titans, Jeremiah Barlow. Yeah, some of y'all love the titans. When Jesus died at Calvary, he didn't die for no other institution than the local church because it is the command of the local church to gather together those who are in the body of Christ to carry out the mission of Christ. I wish I had time to deal with that. Because we don't all agree with the mission of Christ. But that is his purpose. And so my brothers and my sisters, my thesis today simply centered around two things. First, there is for you and I to know that salvation is a process. Y'all better get that. I'm going to give you the text. There are too many folks, but got folks believing that they can trick God, that they can get over God, they can pull the woods over God's eye. But salvation is a process. And my second thesis is there are two baptisms. Not only is, uh, uh, is salvation a process, let me help you. God delivered the Israelite from Egypt. But before they put the blood over the threshold, he said, Moses, that's process. That's process. Salvation is a process. Well, it take place in a minute, an hour, or a nanosecond. I don't know what a nanosecond is, but some computer person told me that one day, a nanosecond. So it is a process. And not only is salvation a process, but there are two baptisms. Why do I raise that? Because we have spent too much time bickering over nothing. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. There are some folks that don't believe that water baptism means anything. And there are some folks that believe it means everything. There are some folks I know, amen, they got water in their pool right now because they believe if you don't get in the water, you won't be saved. 
And there's other folks who say you don't need no water. Well, instead of dealing with your systematic theology, let me suggest that you deal with biblical theology. What the word of God says. The word of God says it like this. John says it like this. He said, I knew him not in first John, the uh, first chapter. I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize, what, what? With water. The same said unto me, unto him thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same he would baptize with the Holy Ghost. There are two baptisms. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you and I got to honor both baptisms instead of fighting about which one is over the other. Because each baptism has its own purpose. Look at the water baptism. Peter says on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Water app baptism simply acknowledge the person acknowledge that I have repented. That's all it says. It acknowledge, it's an acknowledge that the person has what? Repented. It does not save you, does not put you in the body of Christ. But it simply says, to the person said, I have what? Repented. The word repent in the Greek and the English are different. If you ever look up the word repent in the English, you'll see it means feeling sorry about something you've done. But in the Greek, the word repent means to change your mind. In other words, amen, in order before you and I can be saved, we have to change our mind about who Jesus Christ is. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all better listen to me. You got to change your mind about who Jesus Christ is. And not only he says repent, but then he says be baptized. And that is a commandment. That is an heiress imperative. I like talking like me and Michael talk to each other when we start talking. You see, an heiress imperative is a simple commandment to do something in the future. Be baptized. Now, and, 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 and then he says what? Be baptized. And not only is it uh, to be baptized, that's the heiress imperative and repent, I'm sorry. It, it, that's the average, but the, 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 to be baptized is also an heiress imperative, but it is passive. It means that something is acting up on you. In other words, what? God said there's some things that you cannot do for yourself. There's some things that have to be what? Done what? For you and on behalf of you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then he says, for the remission of sin. Now, let me give you something about the, uh, forgiveness. You see, that Greek word for remission has a stronger meaning than just forgiveness. It means to be released or from something. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. You see, when to be forgiven of something is to be released from something. In other words, when, when God forgive us of our sin, he release us from the punishment. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Be released from sin. And so water baptism has its meaning and its purpose. But it does not put you into Christ. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What put me into Christ? I got to leave you. I know y'all getting, getting tired of this teaching up in here. That's all right. What puts us into Christ, what Paul says. He says, what? Well, for by one spirit, are you what? Baptized into the body of Christ. Oh, help me go. Your dogma, your local congregation that you attend, do not 
put you into the body of Christ. Your salvation is not what based upon what you attend your church or your worship, but your salvation is based upon whether or not you are in what? The body of Christ. Unless I hold you too long, I need to move on. I got a little nuggets on to give you. So what is Paul saying here? What is Paul saying here? He's simply saying this as he talked to the Galatians. Every member of a local congregation is, is not in the body of Christ. How did he say that? He says, well, as many of you. He didn't say, what well, all, what? He said, as many of you. And since he said, as many of you, that means that some of what was in the church house, but were not in what? The body of Christ. Y'all better hear me today. There were some folks, as Paul is talking to them, that was what? In the church. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. The church of Galatia. There were some in the church showing up every Sunday, hearing the word of God, singing, and perhaps praying, but they were not in the body of Christ. I wish I had time to teach this message this morning. And, and let me, let me, I don't have time. Y'all getting sleepy on me. But check out Matthew 7. I, I, I'm dealing with the word today. And you'll find in Matthew 7, no close the verse of Matthew 7, Jesus says, in that day, many and many would say, Lord, Lord. And I would say what? Depart from me. And then he, the son would say, well, Lord, Lord, have we not preached in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done what? Many what works in your name? And what? He said what? Depart from me. And so we need to know, Paul simply says, every member of a local church is not in the body of Christ. Second, Paul reminds us this. That you cannot and I cannot put ourselves in the body of Christ. I need to help you all. John, I'm sorry I got old and a little sick of folk telling me, y'all put me out of church. You're getting it, getting it messed up. I don't have the power to put you out of the body of Christ. But I can speak to how we conduct ourselves in what? in the local church. The problem is not that, that somebody say you can't come to a congregation. That's not the problem. That, that don't affect you at all. What affects you is if somebody could put you out of the body of Christ. Because there's no saving power. Listen to me. Even though we ask folks to what? To, to join our congregation. But there's no saving power by being a member of a local congregation. And so you cannot put yourself in the body of Christ. And since you cannot put yourself in, I cannot put yourself in the body of Christ, don't listen to other folks and allow other folks to determine whether you are a Christian or not. The next point I want to share with you, and I've already said it, there is no salvation in congregational membership. I thought about that when I said, well, I'm trying to get people to join Second Baptist. I'm going to say that. That sounds like what, 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 what I'm doing now. I'm doing something like a conundrum. Uh, that may not be the best term. What's the best term, Michael? You, 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 you young and small, young theologian. Hey, Amen. Osmosis or something like that? I don't think osmosis. Uh, it's going against what I'm trying to do. What's that? Counted into it. That's good. That's good. He said, Michael got it. That's counted into it. I need a young theologian around me. When, I, when the Lord showed me that, I said, wait a minute. But that's a fact. Listen to me. That's a fact. This is a teaching message. There is no salvation in congregational membership. That's why I say that. This is a teaching message. There's not no shouting message. Y'all get that on next Sunday. There are people who tell us, if you don't show up in my congregation, 
then you're going to hell. Do y'all know some folks like that? And we got a lot of young folks that don't know no better. They think some building is going to save them. They think if they go to a certain building that has a certain name on the outside, they're going to save them. But what the word said? He said, as many of you have been baptized in the Christ and put on, put, on, put on Christ. Which means that there was no what? Salvation by being what? A member of the what? The congregation. And we need to know that. Because too many folks run and put their name on the church road and think they're going to get in heaven. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So this, this is a teaching message, y'all, but listen to me. If your heart ain't right, if you have not been born again, you can have your name on the road for 110 years and die and go to hell. Because there is no saving power in being a member of no congregation. The saving power is being in the body of Christ. Yes. And then I like this, because we live with, now we live in a world that we have, we have made up our own mind. Y'all want to give me some time? I know I'm over time. Lord, but forgive me. But God put this on my mind. You know, we walk around giving each other high five, and we don't know nothing about the word of God saying. We jumping and spitting and talking and hollering. We don't know nothing of the word of God saying. So y'all give me a little time to deal with the word this morning. Look what Paul says. This is relevant. This is what Paul says. He says this, for there is neither what? Jew, nor Greek, nor neither bond, nor free, neither there's male, nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. My sisters and my brothers, it's time out for us letting folks make us second-class Christians. I need to say it again. There are folks who will try to make us, what, second-class Christians based upon our nationality, Greek, a Jew, what we look like, second class Christian. Based upon our status, rich or poor. You see, your status don't mean nothing in Christ. Born or free. Your gender does not give you supremacy in the body of Christ. In other words, what Paul simply says this to me in this statement is this. Your position in Christ is not based upon external factors. Y'all get this. Your position in Christ, who you are in Christ, the power that you, God gives you in Christ is not based upon external factors. And here it is. I'm going to let you go. The last thing I saw in this, in this te text I want to share with you. Our covering come from being in the body of Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. John says it like this. Bless are the dead that die in Christ. Not bless are the dead that died at Second Missionary Baptist Church. Not blessed are the dead that died at the Church of Christ. Not blessed are the dead that died as a Catholic. But blessed are the dead that died, what? In Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. I want to let you know, church, there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care how much division we see, there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
One songwriter says, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It would never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. All I'm trying to say today to your church, there's a difference between the body of Christ and the local congregation. Make sure that you know the difference. Make sure your mind has been made up and that you've been born again. And if you've been born again, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will put you in the body of Christ. And when you are in the body of Christ, the blood of Christ will protect you. Those saints say that when the God looks at me, he does not see me, but he sees Jesus Christ. And that Greek word that means to put on simply means like slipping in a garment. When you've been put in Christ, you are slipped on Christ. And when you're in Christ, everything will be all right. When you're in Christ, the devil cannot hurt you. And the devil cannot do you no harm. Stay in the body of Christ. Do I have a witness here today? Don't worry about all the foolishness and shenanigans you're seeing right now. Know that God got this thing in control. Anybody believe that God is still in control? Anybody know that God's still in control? I'm not worried about what the world is doing right now. Because I know where my salvation is. My salvation is not in the Baptist church, but my salvation is in the body of Christ. That same Jesus that died out on yonder hill. That same Jesus they pierced in the side. That same Jesus that water and blood came running down. That same Jesus they placed in a borrowed tomb. And that same Jesus that got up one day and said, all power is in my hand. That's the Jesus I'm in today. That's the Jesus I know today. That's the Jesus I'm waiting for. Anybody waiting for that Jesus? When one day Gabriel placed one foot on dry land, declared the time has been, won't be no more. I'm going to be, will you be? In the number that John saw, coming up through trials and tribulations, good God Almighty, on that day, and on that day, on that day, on that day, I'm going to be in the number, going to take over my diadem, take over my diadem, cast it at the feet of him who uh, is king of kings, lord of lords. Will you be, will you be, uh, will you be with me? I'm praying, I'm praying everybody will be there. Yes, I am. I want to see my Jesus uh, for myself. Anybody want to see Jesus uh, uh, for yourself? Uh, I want to be uh, with the Lord, uh, good God Almighty. I know I'm over time, but the Spirit now is working on the inside. Something is saying, uh, fight a little longer and run a little longer. It'll all uh, uh, be over uh, after a while. Fight, fight, fight. Be like Paul uh, said to the Galatians, uh, stand fast, stand fast. Stand on the word uh, of God. Don't let nobody tell you uh, 
who you can't be uh, and where you can't go. Uh, nobody, nobody but Jesus. Uh, nobody but Jesus. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's a difference between the body of Christ and the local congregation. Amen. Stand all over this place. Amen. Amen. We're so thankful that we are part of the body of Christ. We're more than the local church. But we have been bought with the blood of Jesus and that we are part of the body of Christ. Listen, we want to extend the invitation of Christian discipleship on today. If you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, we want you to come right now to be a part of the body of Christ. You can serve in this local church, but we want you to be a part of the body of Christ. Amen. When this song is over, when the music stops, we want you to know Jesus for yourself. When the song is over, when the song is over, when the music, when the music stops, do you know? Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Does he live when your life gets troubled, when your life is troubled Jesus wants to be a part. Jesus still wants to be a part. We want you to know today that you know. Do you know Does he Jesus? live in your heart? Does he live in your Do you believe? Heart? Do you believe that he was born? Do you believe that he died? Do you believe that he died? The blood that came from his side was shed for you and me that we might be a part of the body of Christ. Do you believe that his love can meet you right where you are? We want you to know him today. Does he live? Amen. Put your hands together for the word of God on today. Such a sound and profound message, timely message that we all need to connect with to know that we are a part of the body of Christ and that there is a distinction between being made between the local church and the body of Christ. And we pray that you have received your miracle, your, your blessing, your deliverance on today by worshiping here at SNBC. Again, we thank all of you all for being here. We thank Mr. Calvin and his lovely family for joining in with us in worship on today. Listen, we want to prepare our hearts and minds for the final benediction, but before we do that, Sister Cherie Baker has asked all of you all who are planning on tending the camp out uh, this weekend for the youth, please see her immediately following service for you all, parents, grandparents, and youth for attending the uh, retreat this weekend. Please see Sister Cherie Baker immediately following service. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you and keep you make his face make his face to shine upon be gracious. Be gracious to you, Lord. Turn his toward thee, face toward you, and give you peace. And give you peace. Let's all sing together softly. Lord bless. Lord bless you. And keep. And keep you. Make his face. Be gracious. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn. Lord, turn his toward thee. Face toward you. And give you his peace. And give you peace. If you'd be so kind, extend your arms this way as we give the final benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day. In Jesus' name, let us all sing together. Amen. Amen. With joyous hearts, amen. 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 Together, amen. amen. Go in peace and return in love. God bless you.